morning and welcome to Sunday morning prayer for the second Sunday before Lent. It's good to be speaking to you again and we have enjoyed the last two Zoom coffee meal mornings and I hope that uh, if you fancy joining us you would be able to let me know by email or through the parish office email and I will then put you on the list for next Sunday. It was great sadness, wasn't it, when we heard about the passing of Captain Sir Tom Moore. That really did make me want to cry, I don't know about you, but he was such a, a wonderful example to us all. There's no other real notices to share with you. We still wait until it seems to be right and safe to open our churches again. So... Let's quieten our hearts and our minds as we prepare to meet with our Lord, our Saviour, our God, and we ask the Holy Spirit to fill us all now as we seek to see him and be with him in our worship. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Jesus is Lord, creation's voice proclaims it. For by his power each tree and flower was planned and made. Jesus is Lord, the universe declares it. Sun, moon and stars in heaven a cry, Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord, Jesus is Lord. Praise him with hallelujahs, for Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord, yet from his throne eternal in the flesh he came to die in pain on Calvary's tree. Jesus is Lord, from him all life proceeding yet gave his life a ransom thus setting us free jesus is lord jesus is lord praise him with hallelujahs for jesus is lord Jesus is Lord, or sin the mighty conqueror, from death he rose, and all his foes shall own his name. Jesus is Lord, God sends his Holy Spirit, to show by works of power that Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Praise him with hallelujahs for Jesus is Lord. We have come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, and to pray for the needs of the world. 
we also have come to seek forgiveness for of our sins that by the power of the Holy Spirit we may give ourselves to the service of God. So let's take a moment what's happened in the past week that's made you have bad thoughts or maybe you've been too busy doing other things in the garden or whatever that has prevented you from being close to God. Let's have a moment to ponder what it might be separating us from the love of God. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So let us turn away from our sin and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. We say together, Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore to us the joy of your salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins, restore us in his image, to the praise and glory of his name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed is the Lord, for he has heard the voice of our prayer. Therefore shall our hearts dance for joy. And in our song we will praise our God. A thanksgiving. Blessed are you, Lord our God, creator and redeemer of all, to you be glory and praise for ever. From the waters of chaos you drew forth the world and in your great love fashioned us in your image. Now through the deep waters of death you have brought your people to new birth by raising your son to life in triumph. May Christ, your light, ever dawn in our hearts as we offer you our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. As the deer pants for the water, so my soul longs after you. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship you. You alone are my strength, my shield. To you alone may my spirit yield. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship you. I want you more than gold or silver, only you can satisfy. 
You alone are the real joy giver and the apple of my eye. You alone are my strength, my shield. To you alone may my spirit yield. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship you. And now a reading from Colossians, chapter 1, and beginning at verse 15. Christ is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers, all things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of the cross. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now we're going to have a reading, the second reading, our gospel reading, give, brought to us by David Gethin. Our gospel this morning comes from the Gospel of St John, chapter 1, beginning at the first verse. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of the man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of the Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, O Lord. And now the responsory. Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give you light. You have died, and your life is hid with Christ in God. Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead. Set your mind on things that are above, and not on things that are on the earth, and Christ shall give you light. While Christ our life appears, you will appear with him in glory. Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give you light. 
Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Amen. Last week we had our licensed ministry team meeting and uh, the question was raised, why are we having the Christmas Gospel again so soon? What were the folk who put the lectionary together thinking of? Well, I don't know, but one thought that I have is that it's a, a reading sandwich, emphasising who Jesus is. We had the reading on Christmas morning and then every Sunday since we have had readings that prove the point with the various manifestations of Christ in the middle and then to really emphasise that Jesus is the word, God incarnate, we hear the gospel for Christmas again. The, this makes the words of verse 12 a wonderful miracle for you and for me. Yet, to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. What does it mean for those who believe in Jesus to have the right to become children of God? This is one of the most amazing gifts we can have from God, to be known by him and accepted by him as his child, adopted into his family so that we can call him Daddy. That is the best translation of Abba, Daddy. In the first place, we are released from slavery. Because, and Galatians says, And because you are children, God has sent the Spirit of his Son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a child. And if a child, then also an heir through God. Galatians 4 verses 6 to 7. It's a wonderful, wonderful promise. It means we are released from slavery because before we become God's children in the world, we are held captive and slaves to the fear that encompasses those who do not have the security of love that gives assurance, confidence, peace, joy. In our world today, there are many children who don't know even the love and security two parents give them. They live with a shadow that casts a long shadow, knocking at their self-esteem and their peace of mind. That program um, on ITV, I think it is, Long Lost Family, really shows us how important it is to know our birth parents. The Gospel today tells us that God is spiritually our birth father. Amazing, isn't it? As children of God, we are not only released from slavery, but we are reconciled to him. The barrier that separated us has been removed and healing takes place. Colossians 1 verse 21 says, And you who were once estranged and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds, he has now reconciled in his fleshly body through death, so as to present you holy and blameless and irreproachable before him. When Jesus died on the cross 
for us, for you and for me. He took all we truly deserved for our actions against God's will into his body by removing all that dirt, all those barriers and that prevented us from feeling God's wonderful love for us. He washed us clean and makes us new so that in Christ we can see, be, are seen as holy and blameless and free from all blemish. He does it again and again because of his love for us. This then means that we can know at the final hour, resurrection. Luke 20. Indeed, they cannot die any more because they are like angels and are children of God, being children of the resurrection. We can't do this for ourselves in our own strength. There is nothing we can do to earn a place in heaven and eternal life. We don't need a pin number to get into heaven, a password, a national insurance number, a load of money, a list of good works. We only need to accept the love of God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. If you were to go to Buckingham Palace and try and get in to see the Queen, you wouldn't have a chance, would you? But if you were a friend of Prince Charles, he could walk you straight in to her presence. To get to the mother, you go to the, through the son. To get to the father, you go through the sun. So not only have we been released from slavery, reconciled to God, not only are we children of the resurrection, but we have also received an inheritance. Romans 8, when we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. Amazing. We are joint heirs with Christ. That's really hard to grasp, isn't it? I often feel amazed that I should be granted such an amazing inheritance and you know I've seen close at hand and with the people I have stood beside seeing families destroyed over inheritance. Some people believe they should have more than the others whatever it might cost but none of that business, none of that arguing and destructive language goes on in the kingdom of heaven. You and I, we are all equal at the foot of the cross and jointly hold the inheritance of God with Christ, in Christ and through Christ. So we are released, reconciled children of the resurrection who have received a joint inheritance with Christ. What more could you want? It makes me want to sing, Abba Father, let me be. Abba Father, let me be yours and yours alone. May my will forever be ever more your own. Never let my heart 
grow cold. Never let me go. Abba, Father, let me be yours and yours alone. Let's declare our faith together in Christ. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Christ, Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Time to pray. The Collect. For the second Sunday before Lent. Almighty God, you have created the heavens and the earth and made us in your image. Teach us to discern your hand in all your works and your likeness in all your children through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit reigns supreme over all things, now and forever. Amen. In our prayers, when I say the bidding, wise and holy God, please respond, we are your children. Wise and holy God, we are your children. Loving God, your Son Jesus Christ came that we might have life and have it abundantly. Pour out your blessing upon the nations. Where there is illness, bring your healing touch. Where there is fear, strengthen us with the knowledge of your presence. Where there is uncertainty, build us up in faith. Where there is dishonesty, lead us into truth. Where there is discord, may we know the harmony of your love. We pray for the whole world as it fights the pandemic, but we also Lift before your throne of grace the people of Myanmar, China, Russia, and all those places where there is oppression. Wise and holy God, we are your children. Heavenly Father, you, made, you have made us the church your body in this place. We have been dispersed by the COVID restrictions and our finances are in difficulties. Help us to find more ways to build a family community with you at the centre and to find the means to help us to grow the family of the future in the future. Wise and holy God, we are your children. Loving God, you know us and all that we are facing. We thank you that we can come to you as we are, with our fears 
and concerns, our difficulties and our challenges. Please draw close to each of us and those we remember before you now. Bring to us your peace and comfort and fill us with your spirit that we may be bearers of your grace and hope to others. And for those who are sick at this time, we pray for your healing touch. Margaret Miller, Peg Malpas, Anthony Staples, Anne Bateman, Kate Brantingham, Gary Pollock, Stephen Bradburn, Ken Wilkinson, Teresa and Isla, Sheila Rumens, Victoria Pinton, Karen Hines, Ethel Taylor, Charles McCumber, Eric Farr, Rowan Goddell, Kath Cross, Yvonne Bedford, Catherine Herschel, Kira King. And we give thanks that Teresa Atherton's out of hospital and pray that she will recover fully as she rests at home. Wise and holy God, we are your children. Father, we pray for godly wisdom that sees time in the context of eternity and death as a gateway to heaven. We pray for those that we see no longer and pray especially at this time for Aubrey Evans, Gordon Dunning, Norman Jones, Captain Sir Tom Moore. We ask your comfort and assurance for those who grieve. Wise and gracious God, we are your children. Gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us pray as our Saviour taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Well, I might be seeing you in a moment on the Zoom coffee morning, but if not, I pray that you will have a good week and George will be with you on Wednesday for morning prayer. The blessing. God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face to shine upon us. Help us to be a blessing to each other and our communities that your ways may be known among us. Let all the people praise you, O oh God. Let all the people praise you. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Goodbye. <laughs>